Hello everybody and thanks for watching. This is part four of the uh, DIY CNC splining mill. Um, I've got just about everything done here. I'm going to go over the uh, some of the techniques I used for making the connections, the cables on here, um, and just kind of completing the wiring. But I skipped through most of that um, and then get it's time to get to uh, loading up the laptop and getting the software, the drivers, and all the parameters set. And then by the end of this episode, do the first uh, movement tests, make sure that the X and Y axis are traveling correctly. And uh, I'll probably end up hooking up my old indexing head just to make sure that it's spinning 360 degrees. But otherwise, uh, that indexing head weighs about 200 pounds and I don't wanna mount it to that table while it's still on the pallet there. I have a feeling something would probably tip over. So, uh, for a lot of people out there that do have a machine like this, they're using, you know, at least on these older machines, they're using the old parallel port connector. It's uh, something that you'd have seen back in the 90s to plug your printer in, maybe up to 2004-ish, about Windows XP era. Um, a lot of these machines, including the CNC Masters, CNC Junior, that machine, but you know, back in its day, um, that that software came for a Windows 2000 computer. Again, this was all run on the the 25 pin D sub connector parallel port on your computer. But after Windows XP, no one had the old printer port. Everything had to be a USB connection, and that is why I went with this. Uh, USB controller, it was inexpensive. It it cost me with the hand wheel, the software and everything less than $100. So it still runs the Mach 3 software, which means that now by simply replacing your old parallel port controller with that controller and loading these drivers on, you can use the Mach 3 software, which for a lot of people might be something new but it didn't take much to get the old programs from the master cam system um, no it wasn't I'm sorry not master cam their system was called master XP uh, they had the master XP program on there I it took me like two minutes to rewrite the code to convert it over to run on Mach 3 then Mach 3 supports those old parallel port controllers and runs um, on the old software, I think at least the older versions of Mach 3, but they also run on Windows 10 and 64-bit software. And uh, when the 64-bit architecture came up, that was kind of the death of the parallel port. Um, a lot of these machines are, are hanging on to dear life with that old Dell Pentium 4 Windows XP computer. So if yours is failing on you, you got an old mill like that one, it might be time to look at one of these options. I know going to Mach 3's website, they've got a lot of really expensive options that you can find links to. This is not one of the options they had on their links. This is just a, I found it on Amazon, but I ordered it directly through Saint Smart. Um, ordered it on Amazon, it never showed up. Ordered it directly through Saint Smart, which is the manufacturer of the board, or at least it's got them that puts their name on it. Um, and it shipped right away, so. Anyways, enough being said, I'm going to kind of show you how I soldered up some of these connections and then um, load up this laptop. I also got to still run power. I got pretty much everything already connected, ready to go. Um, internally, it's all there. I have my power input, all my blocks run, um, ran that outlet for the power cord going to the milling machine. Uh, so you can see this cord right here, and then that's for the emergency stop switch. Those two cords come through, plug in, this one's emergency stop, and then here's the uh, power cord going to the middle. And I've got some number 10 supply wire in here, and I'm going to run that into the disconnect switch and then the disconnect switch will power up everything so 
I mean, we'll get back to it, and uh, here goes the wiring. All right, so this is the hand connect, hand wheel connection, or a uh, little pennant. So I'm gonna go ahead and desolder the four wheels, or I'm sorry, four wheels, uh, four wires that go to this thing so that I can put them into one of these style connections to pass through as well. So get these desoldered. totally did it again and put these labels I mean it, it's just a labeling issue but I put all these labels on the wrong order again so I don't think the lights gonna yeah you're not gonna be able to see that but yeah all those are backwards fun stuff Alright, so I'm going through and wiring up the first stepper motor here, and one thing I like to do is kind of stagger my connectors here, so that when I put them in the flex loom, this conduit stuff, they, they there's just not a big fat stack of uh, these butt connectors in, in a barrel. Um, a lot of times that won't fit in the flex loom and then just makes this big pregnant spot in the wire. So I just kind of loop wires because I don't like to cut into the wires going into the motor you only have so much of that before it's all gone um, so I'll just loop them up and kind of stagger them and then tape them up like that so that they they just really do fit nice you don't even notice them in there um, so I've got my wire kind of cut to length and the loom and uh, got my little pigtails pre-made for coming through the box here. So I'm gonna finish up this wiring, get it all set in the looming, and uh, move on to the other motors. I'm kinda, I went through and labeled the wires on this motor, um, just so I've got a reference. This motor is gonna be the one that goes on the indexing head. So it's nice to have these labeled um, that way when you're tracing everything, you know that you've got it connected, right? So, I'm gonna get back to it. Well, there is definitely something going on in here that's not right. I took the motor plate off. These 
connections are loose. Um, and they're not wired correctly. So I'm glad I never attempted to plug this thing in. Uh, the wires don't match the schematic for the 110 volt. They don't match the schematic for 220 volt. And from what I understand, you've got to order parts to convert these from one to the other. So there is definitely something wrong here. Um, I'm gonna have to find out. Maybe, maybe I can see with my camera here. Do those say 110 volt or 220? See 600 volt. Okay, so they're probably 220 volt contactors. But just looking at this, that this just can't be right. Fun stuff. All right, I have every fire extinguisher I own ready. That thing is uh, hopefully not going to burn down my shop. All the electrical connections are done. It's about to get power for the first time. Uh, one thing I wanna do over here, because they didn't give me um, polarity on these motor drivers, um, just in case it does matter, and I didn't know because it didn't say in the manual, I'm gonna unplug two of the three motor drivers. Um, I guess I'll do the two that are plugged into motors here. So that minimizes the risk to only one motor driver fry in. Um, each one of these power supplies is switched over to 230 volt. And this guy, um, I'll flip you over here. Hope that didn't make anyone dizzy. It shouldn't matter. It says it's good for 110 to 220 volts, so should be all good there. Back to this way. And so here it goes. Power's gonna go on, and um, if everything goes right, there should be no smoke anywhere. Come on. not smell smoke I heard noise it freaked me out but that was the fans kicking on no unusual smell whoo those fans really got me all right trial two leave it on for more than a second so far a success we have a green light. Everything's okay with that motor driver. We got 24 volts going in, or I'm sorry, 12 volts going into that board. It's lit up. And all right, so I got a green light on that power supply. Well, that's no good. I'll have to check that out. doesn't like to be open upside down. All right, looking good. So test number two, we have power and it didn't go up in smoke. Will this make things change? Ah, that was smart. All right. We got power. All right, 
everything appears to be powered up and working correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up the laptop and let's get this thing controlled with the computer. All right, so it's come down to time to do the motion test. Got everything loaded up on the laptop. I would have shown you how to set up the parameters and all that, but the control board is seemed to be in, it's, it's just not working out. Um, I'll, I'll show you. So I grabbed the pennant here. Well, first let's turn it on. So we've got power to the thing. Um, little green lights lit up and if I could take this pennant, turn it on, turn it to high. Everything's working. Works great. But if I try to run a program, just hit cycle start here. Everything's moving on the table like it should. Oh, but I need, hold on. Stop. Reset. Let me zero everything out here so it doesn't go trying to travel too far. Oh, it already froze. All right, so not responding. I hit stop, it just, it stops responding. And if I unplug the USB controller, boom, it's fine. Plug the USB controller back in, hit reset. A couple of times, okay, good. I can go back, zero everything out. Now we're in the program so we don't travel too far. And I come over here, you can see we got movement and it's already stopped. We come back over here. It thinks it's done, but it's definitely not at zero and zero. So it didn't finish and there it goes, says not responding again. So I've had this problem before with other Chinese controllers. I'm going to Mach 3's website I found one of the less expensive, but what good reputable controllers. Um, it's about a hundred dollars and it's USB, but I think it's even better because it converts your USB to a parallel port plug so that if you have one of those older machines, it's really easy to interface it right in and the controller itself is compatible with the newer Mach 4 software. So you can actually get the add-ons from their website. They support it. There is support out there for their, for these things. Um, you look up Saint Smart from Mach 3 support, you don't find anything. Um, this other company, I mean, they actually charge you for the Mach 3 software, which these guys don't. They give you a $175 software package for a $40 controller. Um, so we're, I don't think Mach 3 is getting their money. Uh, just goes to show that maybe some of the stuff that's going on between us property or whatever they want to call it I don't know but I'm going through this other website gonna get the parts gonna have to rebuild a few things inside the box and at that point I will go ahead and do a video of setting up Mach 3 and getting everything uh, all the parameters actually done so there's gonna be two more videos on this series if, if everything goes well from here on out one will be getting the new controller card, and then the other one's gonna be building the indexing head. Other than that, this thing is up and going, moving, everything's doing as it's supposed to. So uh, thanks for watching, and keep an eye out for updates on the, the next build. I did get the uh, rush shipping, so hopefully it gets here in the next couple of days and we can get going on the next, all the retrofitting and everything that's going to require to get that board in there so thanks for watching uh if you liked what you saw please subscribe turn the notification bell on hit the like button and uh thank you very much take care